Thank you for tuning into the broadcast of The King of the World. In today's program, I will read excerpts written by the Russian explorer Ferdinand Ozendowski in his book entitled Beasts, Men, and Gods. And in this book, Ozendowski claims that the tunnels which encircle the Earth and which pass under the Pacific and Atlantic Oceans were built by men of a preglacial, hyperborean civilization which flourished in the polar region at a time when its climate was still tropical, a race of supermen possessing scientific powers of a superior order and marvelous inventions including tunnel boring machines we know nothing about by means of which they honeycombed the earth with tunnels. I will now quote from Ozendowski's remarkable book relating his own experiences in Mongolia where belief in the existence of a subterranean world of Agartha ruled by the king of the world who resides in his holy city of Shambhala is universal. Ozendowski writes, Stop, said my Mongol guide when he crossed the plateau of Tzegan Luke. Stop! His camel bowed down without the need of him ordering it. The Mongol raised his hands in a gesture of adoration and repeated the sacred phrase, Om Mani Padme Hum! The other Mongols immediately stopped their camels and began to pray. What happened? I wondered, bringing my camel to a halt. The Mongols prayed for some moments, then mounted their horses and rode on. Look, said the Mongol to me, how the camels move their ears with terror, how the manes of the horses remain immovable and alert, and how the camels and cattle bow down to the ground. Note how the birds stop flying or the dogs barking. The air vibrates sweetly and one hears a song that penetrates to the hearts of all men, animals and birds. All living beings, seized with fear, prostrate themselves. For the king of the world in his subterranean peace is prophesying in the future of the peoples of all the earth. Thus spoke the old Mongol. Mongolia with its terrible mountains and limitless plateaus were born a mystery which was preserved by the red and yellow llamas. The rulers of Lasha and Orga guarded this science and possessed these mysteries. It was during my trip to Central Asia that I heard for the first time this mystery of mysteries to which I formerly paid no attention, but only did later when I was able to analyze it and compare certain testimonies frequently subjected to controversy. The old man on the border of Amul told me an old legend according to which a Mongolian tribe seeking to escape from Genghis Khan hid in a subterranean land later near Nogan Lake I was shown by Soyota a door which served as an entrance to the kingdom of Agartha. It was through this door that a hunter entered into this region and after he returned told of his visit. The lamas cut off his tongue to prevent him from speaking about the mystery of mysteries. In his old age he returned to the entrance of the cavern and disappeared into the subterranean world which memory always brought emotion to the nomad. I obtained more detailed information from Hotaku Jalil Jemshrak, the Narambak Corps. He told me the history of the arrival of the all-powerful king of the world to the door exit of the subterranean world, his appearance, his miracles, and prophecies. I then commenced to understand this legend, this hypothesis, this collective vision which, no matter how we interpret it, conceals not only a mystery, but a real force which governs and influences the course of the political life of Asia. From that moment I commenced my investigations. The Lama Gilong, favorite of Prince Shelton Bailey, gave me a description of the subterranean world. More than 6,000 years ago, he said, a holy man disappeared into the earth, accompanied by a tribe of people, and never returned to its surface. This inner world was also visited by various other men as Kakya, Muni, Undur, Jengen, Paspa, Babur, and others. No one knows where they found the entrance. Some say it was in Afghanistan, others say it was in India. All inhabitants of this region are protected against evil and no crime exists within its boundaries. Science developed tranquilly, uninterrupted by war and free from the spirit of destruction. Consequently, the subterranean people were able to achieve a much higher degree of wisdom. They composed a vast empire with millions of inhabitants governed by the king of the world. He masters all the forces of nature, can read what it is within the souls of all, and in the great book of destiny, invisibly he rules over 800 million human beings, all willing to execute his orders. All the subterranean passages in the entire world lead to the world of Agartha. The Lamas say that all the subterranean cavities in America are inhabited by these people. 
The inhabitants of submerged prehistoric continents, Lemuria and Atlantis, found refuge and continued to live in the subterranean world. The Lama Turgut, who made the trip from Orga to Peking with me, gave me further details. The capital of Agartha, Shambhala, is surrounded by villas where lived the holy sages. It reminds one of Lhasa where the temple of the Dalai Lama rises on top of a mountain surrounded by the palaces of the gurus who control the visible and invisible forces of the earth from its interior to the sky and are lords of life and death. If our crazy humanity will continue its wars, they may come to the surface and transform it into a desert. They can dry the oceans, transform continents into seas, and cause the disappearance of mountains. In strange vehicles unknown above, they travel at unbelievable speed through tunnels inside the earth. The Lamas found vestiges of these men in all parts and inscriptions on rocks and saw remains of the wheels of their vehicles. When I asked him to tell me how many persons visited Agartha, the Lama answered, a great number, but most of those who were there maintained the secret as long as they live. When the Olets destroyed Lasha, one of their regiments in the mountains of the southwest reached the limits of Agartha and were then instructed in mysterious sciences, for which reason the Olets and Talmuds became prophets. Certain black tribes of the east also entered Agartha and continued to live there for centuries. Later they were expulsed from the subterranean world and returned to live on the surface of the earth, bringing with them knowledge of the mystery of prophecy by means of cards and reading the lines of the hand. They were the ancestors of the gypsies. In a certain region in the north of Asia there exists a tribe which is on the verge of disappearing and which frequents the caverns of Agartha. Its members can invoke the spirits which live in space. The Lama then remained silent some time and then, responding to my thoughts, continued, In Agartha the sages write on stone tablets all the sciences of our planet and of other worlds. The Chinese Buddhist sage knows that well. Their science is the most advanced and purest. In each century the sages of China unite in a secret place near the sea and on the backs of a hundred large turtles they come out of the ocean, they write the conclusions of the divine science of their century. This brings to mind a story that was related to me by an old Chinese attendant in the Temple of Heaven in Pekin. He told me that turtles live for 3,000 years without air or food and for this reason all the columns of the Blue Temple of Heaven rest on the backs of living turtles so that wooden supports would not rot. Many times did the rulers of Orga and Lasha send ambassadors to the king of the world, said the Lama librarian, but they could not reach him. However, a Tibetan chief, after a battle with the Olets, came to a cavern whose opening bore the following inscription. This door leads to Agartha. From the cavern left the man of beautiful appearance who presented to him a golden tablet bearing strange inscriptions saying, The king of the world will appear to all men when comes the time of the war of the good against the evil. But this time has not yet come. The worst members of the human race have yet to be born. Chang Chum Ungern sent young Prince Panzig as an ambassador to the king of the world. The ambassador returned with a letter for the Dalai Lama of Lhasa. He wished to send him a second time, but the young ambassador never returned. Will the king of the world return, such as biblical prophecies also predict? I'd like to thank everyone for watching The King of the World.